Today I'm going to show you how to build a $20 co sleeper and put it right next to your bed. This is the bed and the toddler crib mattress that I'm basing all of my measurements off of. You can see that the mattress itself is about 24 inches wide and it is about 38 inches long. Um, I like to make my measurements about half an inch short on these mattresses so that they don't move around because they do have quite a bit of give to them. And then as far as the height of the bed, you can see it's right at 24 inches and that is pretty much flush to the top of the mattress here. So now I am drawing out my cut list and I like to do some sketches just so that when I run into something while I'm drawing I can fix the measurement because once you start cutting well the only thing that can fix a board that's cut too short is a board stretcher and uh, you know I've been looking for one of those for years still haven't found one those are my measurements I've drawn it out from a bird's eye view of the basic frame um, then I've got the rail and the platform that the plywood's going to sit on top so that's what I'm building right there uh, it's fairly self-explanatory but as I go along you should be able to see this all come together Alright, all the cutting is done. So that's 12 bucks in furring strips, and then that piece of plywood was six bucks. So we're only at $18 at this point. Alright, so I've brought the wood in, and uh, the other thing I was failing to mention is if you want this wood to not splinter and you know take care of these rough spots, you really need to sand it. So that's another tool that's handy as some sort of a mechanical sander. I've got a uh, 60 grit or 80 grit piece on here right now because I need to get in there and remove all that kind of stuff. Alright, so now everything has been sanded roughly. I'm ready to start putting it together. A bit of blue. So it is handy. If you have a little square, you can stick it here into the corner and get your boards square with each other. It just helps them join a little bit better. You gotta, gotta get the first one set up just right. I like to keep a rag, a wet rag around, rinsing off my fingers and wiping off excess glue. You do not want to ever have your hand within the range of whatever size grad you're using. It's very easy to stick it right through your hand to keep your hands clear when you're firing. I don't care too much about glue being on the inside here, but I am going to stain this so the outside is a little more important. I will sand the outside edges and that will remove any glue that I miss 
but wiping it with a wet rag is pretty quick and easy. So, definitely recommend it. Alright, now we're going to lay out the panels on top, and that's really what's going to give this structure. Alright, so I've got my first one down, and I'm just going to use a spacer block. I'll just use one of these as my spacer block in between each one, and that's about what it is. It'll just help keep me aligned. Okay, so I've got all my legs laid out, and I've determined what is the top part of my leg, what's the bottom part of my leg, and what's the inside and the outside of the leg. So these are all the worst sides of each leg, so I have them facing up, because this is the side I'm going to make the mark on as far as the height of the crib, which I want at 23 inches, because 23 inches is uh, enough room for the mattress to fit on top and to have room. So I bought extra boards so that I could put these on the edge to act as a as a lip here. It's not really how it's going to go, but basically that give it a little more finished look. So that's what I'm going to do now. So here it is after I've stained it. And now, time to torch it. So this is what it looks like after it's been torched and then sanded and then one 
coat of sealer on top. So the wood only costs 20 bucks, but obviously wood glue, stain, whatever else you might need, sandpaper, if you don't already have those things, will add on to the project. But most people already have those kinds of things laying around, and you can kind of do whatever you'd like. Here is the completed co-sleeper next to the bed. Just wanted to show you that it is about half an inch, three quarters of an inch less than the height of the bed, and that is because the mattress, you can see here, is about that thick and brings the finished height to the same level, which is what we were wanting. So whenever you're building this, take that into account. Whatever the finished product will be with the mattress on top of it so that you have a nice flat surface across both of the beds.